Hello, it's Roxanne. Welcome to Make It Just So. Welcome back if you are not new to my channel. I'm here for the July catch up and recent makes with a big fabric haul too. If you haven't checked out my blog or my last video on how to fix a frumpy big t-shirt, check that out and let's get started. So as far as the first thing for my July recent make, what I did was make my block. Every designer and pattern maker starts with a block. Every designer and pattern maker has a, basically a fit model, a set of measurements of a certain height, of a certain bust, waist, and hip circumference, and they scale up and down from that. If you fit into close to one of those fit models, that is why certain brands of clothing or certain patterns you buy to sew with can fit you really well off the rack or without alteration. But if you don't have that, uh, you'll find yourself always needing to modify the pattern. So it's something I've been wanting to do for a very long time. I'm really excited. It took uh, a lot of effort to get it just right, but I think I got it. And I used it to make the pattern for the boxy t-shirt in my last video. So with some simple changes. You can manipulate where you put the darts and uh, come up with an endless number of styles. I mean, it's the basis for every bodice, the bodice block. So real excited about that. Not real exciting in terms of what I can put on the video, but trust me when I say a lot of work went into it and I'm super pumped to get it, put it to you. The second thing I made in July, and you can see behind me is a, um, kind of a mock-up of what I was thinking about. I needed, I made all those cute tops and I felt like I needed something besides shorts to wear them with. And I know jean skirts are all the rage right now. I could make this out of lightweight denim. Uh, that's a possibility, but I, I really, I don't know. I needed something airier than that uh, A-line or more fitted jean skirt shape that's in right now. I've got that. It's too hot for the Arizona summer and I wanted something breezier. I was picturing this in like a linen, um, you know, something real casual. And I don't know, tell me what you guys think. I love the bubble skirt. I, I know a lot of people are iffy on it, but it actually works for me on my shape. I have narrow hips and like more proportionately top heavy silhouette. So it balances me out. Um, I put pockets in it. I wanted to be able to put my phone in there. I love elastic and the whole, you know, elastic trend. First time I tried it on, I thought it looked special occasion and that's not what I'm going for. I could make it special occasion with a fancy fabric or even a leather, ooh, or a pleather. That would be amazing. I'll keep that in mind for fall or holidays. But for right now, I want to make it in a lightweight fabric. So let me know what you guys think. If you have any thoughts, one more make. This is not that recent of a make, so I'm cheating here a little, but I haven't shared it. So I'm wearing it today. I'll pop in a full picture of uh, how I dressed it or paired it and styled it, but it's Alouette Patterns. I think it's number 620 and it's called Escada's Blouse. She modeled it after a blouse by Escada, the designer. And it's neat because the closure is just this tie neck. So cute different i liked that has kind of a funnel neck and i popped like a bishop sleeve on it can you see there we go i did a little trick because i wanted it real snug at the bottom so i kept the front of the sleeve you know flat so you could appreciate the birds and put smocking on the back so i could get it over my hand and so it's kind of like business in the front party in the back situation i love it it's comfortable i didn't want to go through the trouble of putting buttons on my cuff either that just seemed too tedious and yeah it's kind of a fun little yellow top i don't get to wear much and i got my nails to match that's a make i made now on to the fabric haul we'll start with the fabric mark fabric call. If you're not signed up for their email mailing list, you need to do that every day. They email a different sale. So one of those sales came up. I think it was all knits went on sale. They had some nylon swimwear knits, which 
I love nylon. It's got a real dry matte hand, so it doesn't have that shiny 1980s um, spandex look to it. I'll start with the first. This is my first nylon swimwear knits. It's like a blueberry or I don't know what color you'd call that. Royal, but it's it's coming up a little brighter on camera than in real life, but it's gorgeous. And I live in Arizona now, as I've said, and it is perpetual swimsuit season here. So uh, I figured my swimwear wardrobe could use a little zhuzhing and I haven't made a swimsuit in a while. So I'll keep you posted on that. The next color I got is neon watermelon pink. It's so cute. It's so cheerful and bright. It's just, it just makes me happy looking at it. So excited to make something with that one. Definitely stands up to the bright Arizona sun. Then two more colors of the nylon. This plum, it's not really plum. It's like dragon fruit, which is my favorite shade of purpley pink. I just, I just love it. I don't know if you could tell. <laughs> I love it so much. Very pretty. Excited for that one. And I got how much? A I think a yard and a half of each of those. It doesn't take much fabric to make a bathing suit. One last nylon color, dusty apricot. Now, I don't know if they still have these fabrics. I placed this order, like I said, in the month of July, so they could be sold out. But I could tell on screen that this was a perfect skin tone match for me. And another thing I'd love to do with these nylon, um, like athletic or lycra knits, yeah, nylon lycra, 60 inches wide, is make like undergarments. I can make kind of a sports bra, uh, bra, wireless, um, with whatever kind of strap I want, cutaway, racer back, wide set, uh, you name it. I just double the front and sometimes I double the back. Sometimes I don't. I don't even use elastic. I use the same self fabric underneath uh, to make the band. And it makes the most awesome, invisible, comfortable, supportive bra tops. So I, whenever I see it, I snag it because I like to have it on hand. So there's my nylon stash. I will keep you posted on what I do with those. One more fabric I got at Fabric Mart, and this is another one that I've been looking for for a while, and I just couldn't find. If I had found this fabric before I made my um, first recent makes video back since I've been back in June, I would have made that two-piece set with the cowl neck top and the skirt with the flounces. I would have made that in this fabric because it is a matte jersey knit. It's got amazing drape. Um, it's the fabric I was looking for and it was, it's a rare bird. I don't know why it's so hard to find. It is the best fabric to travel with for travel clothes. And I know we have some big plans, travel plans coming up next year where I'm gonna need to pack very light. So I will be brainstorming on travel clothes I can make with this. Um, you know, super breathable, dries fast, just, just a great fabric. I might even be remaking that two-piece set in this. So stay tuned. I'll keep you guys in the loop. I missed one more nylon from Fabric Mart. I got red because I have a ready-to-wear, like a bikini bottom that's high-waisted with some ruching in the front. It's a black background with red roses. Really cute. It came with a red top. Didn't fit at all. I really love the style, though. So I wanted to get some red to make a top that fit me properly to wear with those bottoms. So again, I'll keep you posted. So now on to the Minerva knits. First one is not a knit. The rest are cotton like knits. This one's a cotton poplin. I think it would make a cute top with poofy sleeves, maybe some kind of a pop over. I only got, let's see how much. I only bought one yard, so could have made shorts. I don't have enough to make a bubble skirt with a yard. I don't know. We'll see. I think I know what I had in mind. I thought of, I wanted to make a t-shirt with the body knit and the sleeve puffy in a coordinating, no, like dead on matching woven. But I couldn't tell on screen if these were going to match. And I thought I could definitely, I love this color. I could still make something with it if it didn't work. 
and this is the knit that I got. So, close, but no cigar. I mean, on camera it looks closer than in person. It, there's a real difference. So, that's not going to work, but I'll still use both. So, that's the poplin. This is my first cotton knit. I think I got a yard and a half of each of these knits. Uh, I've been eyeing a knit, a summer knit t-shirt dress. I have a couple patterns in mind that I might like. I don't know if I'm gonna buy them or try to draft them. We'll see. Again, I'll let you know what ends up happening with the blue. Okay, then good old tried and true black cotton knit. This cotton lycra knit, um, just amazing amazing density and you know when you make things out of cotton in black they tend to fade over time so you really need to make replacements so i need a refresh in my closet basics for uh, you know some black t-shirts throw that to the side two more i have this raspberry colored cotton knit. again i think it's really cute for a summer cotton t-shirt dress so I may be trying that soon with this. If not, a t-shirt, maybe some poofy sleeves. One more. <clears throat> this gorgeous aubergine. It is beautiful. It's not plum, it's not maroon, it's just a gorgeous shade. And I guess this is the color for fall. Really, any shade of red or russet. And this is, I love it. It's just gorgeous. So probably make a top of some sort with this. So I'll keep you posted. I want this to go into fall though. So one last thing on my um, plan, maybe plan list. I want to try to knock this out before the summer's over, which again, I live in Arizona, so I have more time than maybe most people. It'll stay warm into October. Um, I have this dress that I picked up kind of on a th crazy thrifting haul with my friend. Um, we went to the shop and I think it, the store had a lot of returns and from a, a big retailer. And I can't tell where this dress is from, but the zipper was broken. One of the sleeves is missing. I mean, it's a hot mess. All I could see was the fabric though. Wait till you see it. It is gorgeous. And there's definitely enough of it there for me to make. I'm picturing, a little top, maybe some flounce sleeves that has gorgeous trim that coordinates. And I think I was trying to see if I could get this fabric to match it as well. But it's a real special blue. It's kind of a Wedgwood. One second. Here it is. So, broken zipper and all. It's a dress as is. I could just fix the zipper and wear it, but it's kind of, I don't know, what would I wear? A strapless peplum. I could wear it, but you know, it's kind of an occasion-y dress. I'd rather take it and make it something more wearable or something I'll get more use out of. And it's gorgeous. Look at that trim. So I'm gonna find, just brainstorm and figure out what I could do with the amount of fabric I have here. And that I will keep you posted on. I love these little, trash trash to treasure you know projects it's a challenge and it, it you have like definite constraints you don't have unlimited fabric to work with and it makes you think real hard and i love that i love the challenge of that so now i'm on the line i gotta come up with something we'll we'll make it we'll make it good so that is everything i have for today thanks for joining me uh check out my blog for uh, more sewing content. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Give me a thumbs up if you found this video helpful or interesting, and I'll be back with more soon. Bye and happy sewing!